We are continuing on today, and as I said to you earlier, uh, Destiny Church has done a huge service to the Rainbow community in Gisborne. And the reason they've done a disservice, I mean a service, done something good, is uh, if you're watching the video, on the left-hand side here is what Destiny Church, members of Destiny Church did yesterday when they painted over the Rainbow, uh, the Rainbow Street walkover crossing. Now what they've done in doing that is they've given a new clean background for it to be repainted, which it was today, and it absolutely pops. Like, the repainting of it looks a thousand times better than what it was yesterday. So on some level, I think we have to thank Destiny Church for giving a new canvas for a new rainbow flag to be painted in Gisborne that looks exponentially better than the crossing yesterday. We talked a bit about this yesterday, Aaron. I'm going to talk about it tonight as well, a couple of things that have happened. But you went with us last night. You got anything you want to share about the story that's been going around the internet the last 24 hours? <sighs> it's, it's, <laughs> that's a big it's sigh. Just, <laughs> it's, just, it's just so sad to me that these are the things that people choose to let themselves get so wound up about. You know, someone in drag reading at a library, you know, and, and the point's been well made by many people. If you list all of the drag performers in recent history in this country who have been convicted of crimes against children and then list next to that a list of all the religious leaders who have been convicted of the same, it's a very one-sided affair if you're talking yeah. about things you might want to steer your children away from. But, you know, the, the irony isn't lost on me that um, a small army of people turn up on motorbikes all dressed in leather, um, which has certainly never um, been something of interest to same-sex couples uh, and uh, and queer culture, like extras on a Kenneth Anger film uh, or, 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 what, or what have you. But look, it's, it's just so exhausting, this kind of wholesale imported culture war nonsense um, that is perpetrated by, in this case, professional grifters, uh, enlisting people who should know better, enlisting people to their cause for the purposes of making money. You know, not a lot of $3.50 super chats in, in the bishop's tin. <laughs> um, I don't know if you were specifically referencing my Twitter feed, but this is one I put out there today. Hey, Brian Tarmig, let's play a game. Let's play. <laughs> Let's play child sex offenders in the drag community versus the church community. We'll keep sharing names till one of us runs out. I'll start. Graham Capel, your turn. I didn't yeah. hear anything from Brian, so uh, yeah, I don't know. There was one uh, one commenter in this thread today who said something like, um, "What's the what's the rationale behind the two communities, though?" And someone said, uh, uh, "One of them's inclusive and loving, and the other is a church," which I thought was quite a good response to the to the thing. And I don't. I, this is obviously doctored, but I thought there's a photo from my Twitter feed that we could share if we uh, wanted for any particular reason. Yeah. It's been, it's yeah. been interesting. The, the, I mean, I've seen David Seymour's response to this, basically saying, you know, it, this kind of false equivalence that, you, so you don't like your events being shut down by Destiny's Church, therefore the left have no right trying to de-platform uh, people who are giving speaking tours and, and what have you, the, thug, the thugs veto as he calls it and and it's a you know it's a false equivalence because one is punching up and one is punching down you know one is well, there's a there's a fundamental difference between somebody who is organizing a public event that is as you say built around inclusivity uh and supporting people and a very it's a very different situation to people who are going around preaching um hate basically and and trying to um, turn people into victims and create and reinforce those sorts of power structures. I don't think you can uh, compare those things directly. Tolerance and intolerance to me are fundamentally different things. I, I but I also on, the, on an absolutely base level don't have a don't have a problem with people being loud and disruptive and stuff at a at a, at a protest. Don't have a problem with it, either side doing it. Mm. I mm. do have a problem and. and they don't watch us, but if they were watching us, I'd go, well, what about the people who threw punches at Parky Poser? We denounced them. We said that there should be charges if there was crimes committed. One of the differences with this one is the protest was a crime. 
the protest of painting over the thing was a crime. You know, at the Posey Parker thing with a similar kind of vocal opposition here, there, I, I mean, like they were found not guilty in court or whatever, but it looked like some crimes were committed there, whereas this one, the actual protest of painting that out was a crime. And we go on to the story today, where today five people have been arrested with paint cans after a rainbow crossing in Gisborne was restored following its uh, defacement by protesters on Monday evening. Early How do you arrest someone with a paint can? Well, I guess they were going to they were going to commit a crime. I guess they really um, should have put them away if they didn't want to get arrested. You really should put the paint cans away. I think first. Yeah, I mean, I think all those kids that used to tag used to put them down the back of their pants, so the the spray bottle, so you couldn't see them. So earlier, Destiny Church protesters had filmed themselves covering the pride themed crossing with white paint in protest at a rainbow story time event being held at the city's library in a statement this evening a police spokesman told one news five people had been arrested following a protest on gladstone road at around 4 p.m a group of protesters returned to the previously damaged and newly repainted rainbow crossing with paint cans and blocked the road so that's probably why they were arrested the group were arrested for preparing to commit a crime uh, police are continuing to investigate yesterday and today's events and are considering any next steps. The council this afternoon released images of the crossing fixed after it was defaced on Monday with Mayor uh, Rochette Stoltz saying she was thrilled it had been repainted so quickly. This shows inclusivity and how dedicated we are to our whole community. Stoltz said the council was working with police to make those involved accountable and is also seeking reparations for the cost of the work as they should. Uh, in a statement yesterday, Stoltz said, we accept that people hold different views, but there is no place for hate or bigotry. And not that this is particularly good video, but here's uh, maybe 18 seconds of someone who filmed it and you'll see a couple of destiny church uh, people uh, get taken away and actually resisting as well big big guy here in the middle of the screen he resists so there could be a secondary charge there we go resisting that would be resisting that would be resisting you're seeing right now uh, and as he goes around he puts his foot up on the on a chair that would be resisting as well right there that would be resisting so uh, yeah there could be more charges to follow it is a crazy time and, and just <laughs> We had uh, Paul Barlow with us a couple of nights ago on Monday, and he was saying that he grew up around a lot of um, drag queens, a lot of performers, and he explained that to do that kind of public work with children in a library, you have to go through the same sorts of checks, police checks, that kind of stuff, as mm -hmm. you do to run a brownie group or something like that. So the idea of this is some kind of nefarious action to sexualize children from 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 deviance from miscreants couldn't be further from the truth the other thing is someone said in one of my tweets following today said um some libraries in new zealand maybe once a year for maybe 30 minutes have dress up time with drag queens to read stories if you really think that's going to indoctrinate your children into a lifestyle you disagree with probably says more about your parenting than it does yes. anything else. God forbid. <clears throat> Are we, um, oh, I saw an exhibition of Fiona Clark's work at the Southland Museum and Art Gallery, who has taken a lot of photos of Karangahapi Road, uh, cabaret scene in the 70s and, and onwards. Um, but and there was a great, and everywhere the show went, there were outraged letters to the editor, you'll be shocked to know. And, and one of the one of my favourite ones in, in Invercargill was a woman writing about how she wanted to take just wanted to take her grandchildren to see the Tuatara, uh, and had to uh, and I'm paraphrasing now um, do some parenting on the way through by explaining you know I had to explain a picture that my grandchild looked at at the museum. It's like well you probably should be able to do that you know like why why should we absolve you of the work of explaining to your children or grandchildren how the world is or or how it could or how it could look but the, the whole thing is a carbon copy of the satanic panic um uh you know um uh, manufactured issue around homosexuality it's just, it's just moved on to a different element of the of the queer community because it's harder to muster the enthusiasm uh, around these days it's, it's nothing new and again it's just this wholesale 
imported American religious right culture war nonsense. Mm-hmm.